A major, major part of the Cassatone 2 project is going to be figuring out the tape playing mechanisms for both A and B. This is no small feat. You know, teams of engineers created tape players and I'm a novice at best when it comes to electronics. So I was very excited to see that you can actually buy these little units. These are like the bare bones of a cassette player. They're called movements, which is kind of a cool name. So I was excited to see that I wouldn't have to develop a way to play a cassette tape using bits and pieces. So I ordered five of these guys, but the delivery time is kind of long and I didn't want to just sit around waiting and doing nothing when I have a lot of figuring out left to do for the playhead and motor. So while waiting the almost three weeks delivery time, I decided to build this prototyping board so I can move ahead with testing. It's got a breadboard for all the connections, tape A and tape B outputs. It's got the t looping tape here. It's hard to see, but those are potentiometers that control the speed of the motors. Everything is wired up underneath and it's a sort of modular system that allows you to use a patch bay for testing and figuring out your component values without having to solder your elements together. Let me show you how I made this. So at my makerspace, I'm referencing my hand-drawn diagrams here for the motor and the playhead uh, systems. I'm putting some scrap elements down on the board to figure out how I want them laid out. And first thing I'm gonna do is use this paddle bit to drill holes for the two motors to rest inside of. And here's a shot of my butt. So now I've got those little pockets for the motors to sit in. And what I'll need to do is drill out little channels in the wood so that the wires can go underneath the board. So now that the pieces are screwed together, you can see those little channels there and the wires fit through nicely and the motors sit right in place. Very satisfying. So the cassette tape loop will need to have posts that it will spin around. First, I'm gonna put a screw down as a post, but the marker caps will go over the screw and act as a surface for the cassette to run around. Now back in my house, I've secured the motors down with washers. And this is where I came up with the idea to make this a modular board, so I'm showing that here. I'm gonna use two AA batteries to power the motors. And this is a piece that I salvaged off of one of the many scrap cassette players that I have broken over the years. It's going to hold the tape against the motor shaft and push the tape around. I needed it to be adjustable and I came up with this solution. So I took a screw, glued it in upside down, put a washer down, put that roller element on top of the washer and then use a wing nut to tighten or loosen that roller as I need. Now the playhead's also going to need to be adjustable so that I can make sure the tension against it is just right. Otherwise no sound will transmit through it. So here's the solution I made for that. It's adjustable and it has the little wing nut that uh, hopefully doesn't push against the tape that tightens the playhead into place wherever you need it. And then you can see below that there's a screw holding the whole thing together. So I made it with some scrap wood uh, glued together, and then I attached the playhead to it. Then I cut this channel here for the screw to go through and the wing nut assembly. In order for it to be fed from underneath, I just used a razor to cut a hole in the board. The unit then fits underneath, and I simply put a screw through it, and the wing nut is attached. So now I can put tension on that tape as I need. So this is where I took some time to add these holes on the side where I'll feed the jumper cables through. And those jumper cables can be attached to a breadboard or directly to each other. Um, so I'm simply feeding them through one by one and gluing them into place. Hello. And then I labeled everything on the side so that it was easy for me to remember where everything is wired up. In the first experiments, the tape was having a hard time making its way around the shaft of the motor. So I decided to use these sewing bobbins here to add a few more posts for the tape path. And that just made the angle that it had to go around a lot less severe. 
And you can see here, even though the tape loop is a warpy mess, it's making its way through. So the next day I've got everything wired up back at the maker space. You can see below here, it looks like a rat's nest, but I try to keep it pretty clean. And it all goes through the patch bay here where these jumper cables can either patch directly to each other or on top of the board where I have the little um, prototyping breadboard for all the elements. And these are little bits of shrink tubing that I put on the shaft of the motors so that I could make sure that they were actually spinning around. So it was time to test the playheads and make sure that they were working as well. Now this isn't the best example because this tape loop is obviously very warped, but even when it was a smooth tape loop, it kept getting caught up on the posts I was using, the little purple marker cap there and the sewing bobbin. And I think it's because they were not able to spin with the movement of the tape. So I decided to take those off and replace them with corners of cassette tapes. And these were cut off of old scrap tapes that I had. And as you can see, the loops go through those a lot easier because those little spinning wheels were able to actually rotate. So it's time to test both playheads, A and B. And when I saw that they were both sending a signal out, I decided to bring it downstairs to my studio to add some effects. So it was about this part in my experimenting that I got an email saying that the uh, tape parts were delivered. Those movements made their way to my house two weeks early. So of course I ran right out to the mailbox and got them and at first I was very disappointed because they are small and that led me to believe that they were for those small type tapes that I used to use in answering machines and those little hand recorders. So I was bummed and as I was looking for the potential of using, you know, some of the bits of it, I uh, realized that the full size tapes do fit in them. They're just a very small footprint, which is cool and it looks awesome. So I'm very excited that these were exactly what I meant to order. And that means that the uh, prototyping board gets to go up on the shelf now. I am super excited to get these tape movements into the process and the next step is going to be awesome. So thank you very much for your help there, prototyping board. 